Welcome to Living the New Life with Valentine Okeke. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So um, in the weeks ahead, we are going to begin to look at the characteristics of love. Why is it important that we look through the characteristics of love? Because for you to deal with anything, you need to understand the features of those things. When you understand the features of your currency, it helps you to dictate the counterfeit. So likewise, when we get to know the characteristics of love, it helps us to know whether we are working in love and it helps us to know when people are walking in love and when they are not walking in love. Because, you know, you have fake love. Just like you have counterfeit. Any good thing has its own counterfeit. So that's why it's important for us to learn the characteristics of love. That will help us walk in love. And it will also help us know when people are really not walking in love. It will help us to shape up our lives so that we can be a fit instrument in his hands. But in summary, love hinges on three things. You have the, the suffering love. You have the rejoicing love. And also you have the covering love. Those are the three pivots of love. It revolves around these three things. Number one is suffering love. Then number two is rejoicing love. Number three is covering love. There is no way you can truly love without being vulnerable. True love comes with its hurts and pains. And that explains why people don't like suffering love. Because it has its own hurts. And the natural, fallen human nature doesn't like anything that hurts it. That's why we have so little love in our congregation. Because people are not prepared to pay the price. When you genuinely love, there is every tendency that people will take advantage of you. So there is no way you can genuinely love without being vulnerable. But you see, as you cultivate and walk towards perfect love, it will cast away the fear of being taken advantage of. A lot of people refuse to love because they feel that people will take advantage of them. So long as you are afraid to love, so long as you are afraid to show kindness, then your love is still immature. Perfect love has no fear. Remember we said that one of the benefits of love is that it casts away fear. Number two is that it overcomes. And we said that the three steps through which you can develop and walk in love is number one is that you must have a sharp image of God. An enlightenment about the attributes of God. When you begin to know him by his name, it makes it easy for you to love him, and as you love him, you will begin to trust him. And we said that number two, is that we should be able to pray in the Holy Spirit. Because when we pray in the Holy Spirit, it is our most holy faith. Then we talked about practicing love. So those are the aspects that we are going to look at in the days ahead. 
But this morning, I want you to go home with one or two principles. The first is that you must always bear in mind that love is not expressed until a sacrifice is made. Love is not expressed until a sacrifice is made. The sacrifice of your time, the sacrifice of your energy, the sacrifice of your resources. Those are about the three most important things that you can sacrifice for anyone, especially your time. Because the stuff of which your life is made of is time. That is why when you squander your time, you are simply squandering your life. You don't allow people to waste your time. So in other words, love is only expressed when something is laid down. Love is only expressed when something is laid down. So you lay down your life for Jesus Christ every time that you give up your energy, your money, your time for him. When you go for evangelism, you're giving up your energy, you're giving up your time, you're giving up your resources. You're laying your life, as it were, down for Christ. And he said that in due season, I will reward you. There are a lot of things that we are believing God for and trusting him for, but those things will never come to pass until we learn the secret of laying down our lives for him. Going about our father's kingdom business. He said that when you seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, he said, all these other things that you desire, the clothing, the housing, the food, the wealth, he said, he will make them available to you. But you must first of all seek first his kingdom. You must first of all lay down your life for the kingdom. You must first of all lay down your time, your energy, and your resources for the kingdom for all these other things to be added to you. But too many times we go after the things, the cares of this world, and in the process we end up with nothing. Because there is no way you can place the cart before the horse and expect to have motion. So that's why it's very important that we understand some of these principles. That love is never expressed until a sacrifice is made. And that's why we are told not to love by lips only. They show me your action. And I'll show you my fate. Both of them work together. Faith and love work together. They are all action-based. Thinking about it is not enough. That is just the starting point. But love is an active word. It's an action word. It's something that you do. It's not sufficient to think about it. That's why love is not a feeling. So the question this morning is, what are we prepared 
to give in order to take away pains from others. What are we prepared to give in order to take away miseries and sorrows and difficulties and disappointments from other people? Genuine love gives all the time. And it gives unconditionally. But the natural fallen human nature likes to take. It likes to use. But anywhere you find genuine love, you find giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus Christ had to sacrifice his life in order to take away our sins, our sorrows, and our sicknesses. So what are you laying down today? Or what are you prepared to lay down so that you can put a smile on the face of someone else? So in the days ahead, these are some of the things that we are going to learn. The characteristics of love. And I said you can sum it up in these three pivots. The suffering love, the rejoicing love, the covering love. The suffering love is where the heart takes place. It's just like the love of a mother. When conception takes place from that point, the mother begins to go through hot, begins to go through pain. The climax is the labor pain. But no sooner delivery takes place, what happens? And the baby is laid in her arms. Joy takes place. So the suffering must come before the joy. So because of the joy that is laid ahead, it helps us to endure the suffering and not the other way around. Because of the joy, the glory that was laid ahead for Jesus, he was able to endure the suffering of the cross. But these days, we don't preach about that. We talk only about the joy, the reward. Nobody likes to hear about the suffering love. But of necessity, we must go through the pains of love before we can experience the release from those pains, which is the joy. Is that okay? Then, of course, as soon as the joy comes, the grace of God covers our weaknesses. That is the covering love. Because without His grace, there is no way we will be able to assess its reward. It takes His grace for us to be able to assess that that he had made available to us. So these are some of the things we're going to learn in the weeks ahead. And I think it's falling into place. So by the 1st of December, we are now going to look into the various characteristics of love and see to what extent we've been faring loving one another and also loving God. So that will also even help us in our prayer and fasting. And I believe at the end of the 12 days, our lives will never remain the same. Because you see, it takes the love of God to unlock the power of God. That's why we are told in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that God had not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of sound mind. There is no way you can experience the anointing of God until you learn how to 
walk in his love. It is the compassion of God that unlocks his power. So in those 12 days, I believe that God is going to touch our hearts and grant us a heart of flesh. The hard heart God will remove. The impure heart he will remove. The insincere heart he will remove. And give us the heart of flesh. A compassionate heart, a tender heart. So that we will be able to see things the way he sees them. Because not until you begin to see things the way God sees things, there is no way he will allow his power to flow. His redeeming power flows through compassion. And with a hard heart, there is no way you will be compassionate. So that's why it's important that we get to that point that we have that tender heart. When we have that compassionate heart, the power of God begins to flow. He, in turn, can trust us with his power because he knows that we're going to use it for the good of others. We're not just going to call down fire to destroy our enemies, but we're going to love them anyhow. All true. Can we all stand now? Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast. You can join us in worship every Sunday by 9 a.m. for World Feast. Venue is at the 7 Option Parks, Ladoke Akintola Boulevard, opposite Caribou Hotel, Gurki Abuja. God bless you.